Hey what's going on guys then my for simple snippets back with another video tutorial on boolean algebra logic gates and digital electronics as a whole so in this complete playlist we've been covering all the different topics under digital electronics boolean algebra and logic gates and in previous couple of video tutorials of this playlist we've seen different types of flip flops and we've also seen what is the concept of sequential circuit and how clock works so in this video tutorial we are going to be covering clocked t flip flop so if you have missed any previous videos wherein we've discussed the different types of flip flops like sr flip flop we saw the d flip flop we also saw the jk flip flop so you can check it out in this playlist itself so with that being said let's get started with today's topic so clock t flip flop is again one more variation of the flip flops and this flip flop as the name suggests t flip flop which means toggle flip flop especially gives us the toggle functionality so this flip flop is essentially only used for toggling purposes because the truth table of this flip flop enables us only that feature or gives us only that state and one more state that is previous state so it does not have a lot of states and we'll see that in the truth table when we see the different cases so let's start off with the circuit diagram so as you can see we have only one input which is known as the t input that is the toggle input and this input goes to both upper and lower nand gate now the first set of nand gates are three input nand gates and the pink line or the pink inputs to the both nand gates you can see is coming from directly the outputs so this is basically the sr latch part so the nand gates in the front in the blue are the sr latch and this arrangement which is behind that latch is the arrangement of clock t flip flop so we also have a clock input to the first two nand gates we have one toggle input which goes common to both these nand gates and then the third pink line which is coming out from the output of this sr latch so q goes to the lower nand gate so it goes over here and q bar goes over the upper nand gate okay so this is the arrangement of clocked t flip flop and this is the circuit diagram so let's actually begin with the cases and then we'll understand and construct the truth table along with it so let's start off with case 1 so let me just write down case 1 so in case one, what we'll do is we'll assume clock equals to zero. You can see over here. So I'll say clock equals to zero. And if you already know the truth table of NAND gate, you know that when any of the input is zero, and in this case the clock is zero, which means the first two NAND gates both get zero, the output is always going to be one, right? So the first output of the first two NAND gates is going to be one, and this is then fed over here as input to the next two NAND gates. Now. We've already seen SR latch and this is an SR latch scenario, this two NAND gates. So when the input of the SR latch is one and one, the output is always going to be the previous state, right? So if we are searching for QN and Q bar N, so we would get QN minus one and Q bar N minus one. Because in this case, we have to assume the output because when one of the input of NAND gate is one, the output is depending upon the other input, right? Because if this is zero, then the output is going to be one. And if this is one, the output is going to be zero. In fact, let me just construct the truth table for NAND gate. Okay, so I have just quickly created a truth table for NAND gate. So as I mentioned, if any of the input is zero, the output is always going to be one. And if both the inputs or all the inputs are one, the output is going to be zero. So if I'm supplying one and one to this SR latch, the output is depending upon this input. So here we have to make that assumptions. So if you want, let me just show you how we can make the assumptions also. So we are just taking with case one only. So let's assume QN was zero in the previous state. Okay. So this QN is now fed back over here. So we get zero and we get one from the output because we are still looking at case one. When zero is supplied to this NAND gate, the output is one. So we have zero and one. So zero and one will give you one, right? So Q bar will become one. Now this one is again fed back over here. We already have one as the one of the input line from this NAND gate, right? So one and one will become zero. So again, we got zero. Now this zero can be fed back again over here and you'll get again one. So this means that when the clock is zero, the output from the first two NAND gates is always going to be one and one. And then the SR latch, that is these two NAND gates is going to give you the previous output. So regardless of T, so we are not even considering T, right? We haven't even seen what T value is because you don't need to consider because when clock is zero, the circuit acts as a latch and gives us previous state. So T is equal to X, which means that it is a don't care condition. So cross over here and the output is Q N minus one Q bar N minus one. So this was the first case. Now let's see the second case when the clock is equal to one. So case two clock equals to one and let's assume T is equal to zero. So we are saying T equals to zero. So we just assumed T equals to zero. 
so this line is going to be 0 and this line is going to be 0 we have seen clock as 1 so clock is 1 now again since one of the input line is 0 that is t equals to 0 so we have 0 over here also and 0 over here also so if one of the input of NAND gate is 0 you know what the output is right so it's going to be 1 so again 1 and 1 is being supplied and when remember when we have 1 and 1 the output is always going to be in the latch state right so we will get qn minus 1 if this is qn and we will get q bar n minus 1 so again we are getting latch state so qn minus 1 q bar n minus 1 right so this we just saw in the previous state also because if we are supplying 1 and 1 to the sr latch the output depends upon the another input and then we have to make the assumptions of the previous input so let me just erase this out here the output is going to be q n minus 1 and q bar n minus 1 now both these cases are basically the latch state so these are latch or memory also known as previous state so we are more interested in this last case because this is the case wherein the toggling case happens so this is the speciality of the clock t flip-flop so let's see what that case is so let me just write down case 3 so I'm gonna say clock equals to 1 and again the t value is going to be 1 now so let's see what happens in that case okay so I've assumed t equals to 1 so we have t1 over here and t1 over here we have the clock already as high 1 so you can see we have 1 so now what happens is now the output of these two NAND gates depend upon the third input that is coming from the pink lines pink circuit lines which are basically the output qn and q bar so now again we have to make these assumptions so let's say for first we take assumption as q equals to 0 okay so now we are assuming q equals to 0 now this q equals to 0 is fed back over here right to this line so this becomes 0 now if one of the input becomes 0 the output of this lower NAND gate becomes 1 right and since q bar we uh, q we've assumed 0 which means q bar has to be 1 because that's how it works right q and q bar are always complement so 1 is being supplied over here so 3 times 1 if all the inputs are 1 the output is 0 so we get 0 over here okay so we've got 0 and 1 from the first two NAND gates now let's see what happens so for the upper NAND gate if one of the input is 0 and yes it is 0 the output is going to be 1 which means when q and we assumed as 0 we got 1 and this 1 is now fed back over here from from this as the feedback mechanism so we have 1 and 1 from the lower NAND gate also so we get 0 so q bar now becomes 0 so when we assumed q equals to 0 and q bar as 1 we got the output of 1 and 0 which means we toggled the state from 0 to 1 right we flipped the uh, or we took the complement of the output so this is what the toggling state is and in fact to prove you let's take the case of q equals to 1 now so we had assumed 0 now let's assume q equals to 1 first okay so now let's assume q equals to 1 so we are keeping toggle as 1 and both the inputs are going to be 1 then since we have keep, kept t as 1 clock is also 1 so now we are assuming qn is 1 okay so now this qn is now supplied as 1 to the lower NAND gate so 3 times 1 will give you 0 right so q bar has to be 0 so 0 will be supplied to the upper NAND gate over here so if one of the input is 0 the output is going to be 1 so now for the lower NAND gate we have 1 0 so output is always going to be 1 right so we got q bar as 1 now this one is supplied back to the upper NAND gate as feedback now 1 and 1 will give you 0 so 1 becomes 0 which means again since we initially assumed 1 we got 0 as the output as the next state which means we are toggling between 1 and 0 and 0 and 1 so this is known as the toggle state so qn becomes qn bar and q bar n becomes qn and this state is the special state which is known as toggle state toggle is basically just flipping between 1 and zeros so if previous value is 1 the next value would be 0 and if the previous value is 0 the next value would be 1 so this will give you the toggle state so this was the special case and you can see that there are no more further cases because we are only having one input so if we are having one input the number of combinations that is going to be is 2 raised to 1 which is only 2 so we are having two combinations and the third combination is when the clock is 0 basically when the clock is 0 we are not going to do anything and it's going to be in the previous state or the last state but when the clock is high we are only having two combinations because we are having only one input and you can see the input is always going to be same because both the circuit lines are directly joined to each other there is no complement in between so if upper NAND gate gets 1 lower NAND gate also gets 1 and vice versa so this is the block diagram 
you can see the T input, the clock input, the Q and Q bar. So inside this box, we have this entire circuit, which we just saw. And I hope now the circuit diagram and the truth table and all the cases are clear to you. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you like this video. Share it with your friends if you feel this video will be informational to them. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Peace.